All right, folks, how are we doing? My name is Richard from Quick and Small Collectibles. I'm here with AJ Herrera of Forbidden Panel. We are offering you your first episode of our collaborative panel cast. Normally, AJ does uh, panel cast on his, uh, through his company, which is at ForbiddenPanel.com. So you be sure to follow them and uh, listen to the panel cast. He does things like uh, movie reviews. Movie reviews, comic book reviews, video game reviews, geek reviews, stuff like that. Um, so now I'm together with, uh, I mean, Richard's always been FP one way or another. Uh, and now that he's got his uh, store going on and stuff, we decided to make a collaborative podcast and get together and talk about toys. Yeah, so we're going to do, also here we'll do, a lot of the same stuff, movie reviews, toy reviews. He does more uh, current uh, movies on his stuff, like uh, new stuff that comes out. We might do like a uh, review, like like the new uh, Rad's coming out, out again. Right. So we may we may watch that again and review it. So we may do like older stuff here. Um, and we, we're going to talk more about toys, which they don't really do on his panel casts. So, uh, but still, it's a collaborative effort between the two companies. We've always kind of, like, we've known each other since, what, the fourth grade? Fourth grade. <laughs> so, so, after 40 years, they all just blend into one, you know. So, this is this is uh, our first actual uh, podcast together uh, of the two companies together, so. Right. And before we begin, I wanted to give a sh quick shout out. I wanted to mention the shirt. In case you can't see it, it says, Bill the Vampire. Uh, Bill the Vampire is an awesome book series written by Rick uh, Gultari. You can find it on Amazon. Um, it's about a, a fat, lonely, geeky uh, dude such as ourselves uh, who gets turned into a vampire and realizes he doesn't get skinny or beautiful. He stays fat, geeky, and dorky. Uh, <laughs> and continues to play D&D &D awesome. with his new coven. So <laughs> that's it's great. And in fact, it gets to a point where he's, it's so geeky that his best friend, who just happens to have a G1 Optimus Prime, much like this one, but uh, unlike this one, uh, that he, he loves his G1 Optimus Prime so much that it becomes a holy item in his collection. And so Bill the Vampire can't touch it, because when it does, it burns his skin. That's how awesome this series is. <laughs> so if you haven't had a chance, go check it out. It's called Build the Vampires on Amazon by Rick Walteri. It's awesome. And I just want to give a quick shout out. So anyway, moving on. <laughs> That's part of the subject, not Build the Vampire, though. We did right. want to give the shout out. Part of what we are going to discuss today is why we collect what we collected as children onto what we collect now. And basically the evolution of the stuff we do collect. And why we collect what we do now, as opposed to what we collected as children. Um, so I guess we should start. Uh, uh, well, first, there was something I wanted to bring up to Richard earlier that we didn't get to discuss yet. Uh, yesterday, Richard brought up a good point. Something he and I have started doing recently, and that's called the question. Uh, so the question yesterday was, what was our favorite time-traveling movie? And... Uh, we had to put a little bit of restrictions on it, where it had to actually involve traveling to and from uh, a point in time, be it the past or the future. So it can't be something like Captain America, where he gets frozen and then awakens in a different time. Right. It has to be to and fro. Right. Yes. It can't be like the Terminator, where they all get sent to the past. You know, it has to actually be to and back and forth. So we both agreed that Back to the Future was probably the number one on our list. Uh, of time travel movies. However, I am now here to refashion that question into another question. What is the best time traveling TV series? And you can't say Voyagers. Why? Because I knew that was going to be your <laughs> go to. <laughs> it's literally time <laughs> travel. Like, why? <laughs> Because that's all he's been watching lately is Voyagers. I, I love Voyagers. Uh, ooh, favorite. I mean... <laughs> you don't have to answer no. now. It yeah, could, I, it could be I'm a question to me gonna, answer at the end of the show. I'm going to have to think about but, that one. But it's just, just food for thought. So, Richard, uh, let's get this started. What was the first toy you started collecting? The first thing I would have been collecting would have been the uh, 
the Mego, uh, they were called pocket figures. So they, I don't actually believe they had really any mobility at all. They were uh, probably about three and three quarters, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, you know, I was really into Batman, especially when I was a kid. So, uh, you know, they had Batman Super. Like, back then, uh, Mego licensed everybody. Right. Mego was the only action figures we got as kids very early on. And then I went from that to the, the six-inch Mego figures. And then what really uh, what really got me going was, you know, what got a lot of us into collecting was Star Wars. Um, now, Mego, the first Migos I got were uh, Jason and the Starfighters, uh, as well as... Um, the Marvel one that they did. Now, Migos, uh, the ones I collected, they were about six inches. Yeah. And uh, what you thought was like the outfit or costumes was, was exactly that. It was just an outfit. And you would unbutton the top button and take the clothes off and they'd be like uh, pretty much naked underneath. And so it was weird because I had the thing. Oh, yeah. He, he took his rocks off and he's like got a human body underneath. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, weird. If either one of us was a little taller, I actually have a couple of Migos up there on the top oh. shelf. <laughs> See how we'd, we'd have to climb. On camera, we're huge. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so what What was the first thing that you were really... But what really got you into collecting, collecting, though? Not just your first toy you remember, really. Star Wars. Star Wars. I mean, it, it's a toss-up. It, it, between the, you know, the old Spider-Man on the line. Yeah. Sliding yeah. down that, you know. There was that, and... and remember the... Um, the Rage in the Cage Hulk that had yeah. the little pump and he would. Yeah. <laughs> I had so uh, it was Star Wars. Those were those were still Mego, right? And I think so. And I also had uh, the incredible the Mean Mean Green Machine was what we called it. Yeah, the the, the, old... the tricycle little yeah. machine. You pulled on the handbrake and you powered out. Yeah, I remember the uh, the they had the Dukes of Hazard one like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, yeah, I started uh, collecting Star Wars figures, especially. Uh, you know, we were both very young back when the original Star Wars first came out. We were like four or five years old yeah. when it came out and immediately hooked. And so I went to the store, bought all the Star Wars toys I could buy, action figures all over the place, you know. Yeah. Especially when... Back when you can get an action figure for like a dollar seventy-five. Especially <laughs> when uh, um, Empire Strikes Back came back because that was... We had gotten a little bit older at that point. We understood a little bit more, and the story was more impactful. I think that's why, for us, Empire was the best out of the trilogies, because that's when we truly understood the adult motivations <clears throat> behind everything. You know, and and plus the Dagobah playset was awesome. Yeah, uh, that, everything the playsets, the just the, I mean the the scale, the Adat, how huge that Adat yeah, was. Yeah, the Adat came out. The, the the Millennium Falcon came out. The the, the personnel carrier, the personal spaceship right. carrier. I had one of those, and it, the handle was a little miniature of the spaceship itself. They went up like a big tube that was going to get. Yeah, yeah. You know. Those were like, some of the best toys of our our yeah. childhood. Obviously. That was also when uh, the Vader bust came out that opened up into a figure holder, and you could put all the different Star Wars action figures in there and close it up. Yeah, over <laughs> it's over there in the corner. Yeah, so that's when. That <laughs> yeah, there came was out the too. the Vader one and the C three PO one. Yeah, and which so uh, the little action figures. Those carriers. all came out around the same time, and they were awesome. Well, yeah, yeah. As you, if you remember when we were first when Star Wars first came out, I don't know if you were part of that original twelve group that got the stupid little card. No, I the didn't. Pre-release, yeah. I didn't. No, yeah. I wanted. Which to. that thing is worth so much money, just that card alone. Right. Like, oh my god! But yeah, I I I got that. You know, for for the my, my parents had ordered me from T G and Y back in the day. Uh, those those figures and man, like when I when I finally got them, they were the greatest thing in the world. Like yeah. I remember with the card, like I because I mean, as kids, we didn't have like what what people have nowadays. Like did how how easy how many toys are out there? It was it was pretty limited, right? Um. I remember cutting out the actual pictures of of the figures that they had on them and using them like action figures. Yeah. Like I would use the little stand from, I don't know, some board game, and I would use those to play with yeah. and, no, until I mean, we eventually got them, you know. Well, we also... It's also part of growing up a little poor. Back, back <laughs> then, we also didn't have the internet, so we, we catalog ordered everything. So And also, on the back of comic books, we would have to clip out all those stuff uh, to order stuff like that. So when... 
you know, places like uh, Fedco and, and TG, TG and Y and all that stuff, which, which show this stuff in the catalog, we couldn't exactly go down and pick them up. We had to mail order them. So here we are waiting for months, sometimes even a year or so, before they would show up in the mail. And then, oh, holy crap, look what we got. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And in the meantime, we're watching all our friends who had already pre-ordered it, <laughs> playing with it. We're just sitting there like, this is really neat. Or even, even just... I remember as a kid, one of my favorite things uh, was waiting for that uh, Christmas catalog to come out. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the the Sears catalog or the J C Penney's catalog, and just just sitting there or the mall catalog, looking looking at the looking at the toy section. I actually, to till I I still have it somewhere, but up until my grandmother passed away, in her living room, she had um, you know like a little desk or whatever sewing desk Mm -hmm. and in one of those drawers there was a christmas catalog which had been there since it was i probably uh 1980 and she kept it that entire like literally like she passed away uh probably in 92 somewhere right there and um like yeah she she had kept that catalog in there because every time i would even when i was older even as a teenager I would go there to visit or take, because I used to take care of my grandfather, and I would look at that catalog. It just, it was something, and I still have it. Like, that catalog's actually in storage. I still own it to this day. Nice. But it's a Sears catalog from 19, it's either 80 or 81. And that catalog alone, you know, is worth something. Not just, yeah, probably. Not just you, but just out there. Yeah. And, and, and those were the old days. See, now you know you're getting old <laughs> when you're like, those were the old days. <laughs> <laughs> so continuing on what what do you still collect uh gone are the days of transformers and gi joes and all that stuff now i just i'm a uh, transformers i stick to transformers and i've even had to weed down that collection to where i only collect certain things like combiners and um some of the classic characters i like like optimus prime and Soundwave and Jetfire. Jetfire is probably one of my all-time favorite Transformers characters. But other than that, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the weird things. Once you start, and maybe I'm just the only one, but uh, I create characters now on a daily basis. I write a comic book series and, and, and stuff like that. And so I, now that I do that, I'm more interested in the in the universe that I'm creating than playing in other people's universes. So yeah. I... I I love Transformers, and I'll always collect them, but I can't imagine collecting anything else that isn't something I've created already, you know, because I'm having too much fun with that world, you know? I do I do very similar things when it comes in. It's some of the advice that, which is another thing we will talk about in the future. When I do uh, customs, I always tell people to come up with a story in your head of, of why you're making this custom, even if it's an already established character. Right, an origin like, story or that, something. Yeah, yeah. You, but you, regardless, you're doing your own version of that character. And I always tell people to come up with your sto- a, a story of it for it while you're creating it. It makes it like it, it makes it funner first of all and it drives you to to continue and, and to go forward with it right and um like i started i didn't like the classified joes when they came out i didn't like the way they were painted so i repainted them uh to be more modern colors and that developed into making different teams mm-hmm. like i i did them in the in the the current like um desert camo style or desert style colors and it developed into me making an entire desert team. And then I made like a night force team, which is like a silent jungle uh, operations in, in the evening. So like it just, I, I eventually made my own. So team. you're still playing with the toys. Kind of. Yeah. You know, I mean, in your own head. Yeah. In my head. You're doing in my this. Mind. And, but in your head, you're like, pew, 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 pew. Yeah, you're pretty still much. getting down. You're yeah. like, Oh, he's got this day. Look, he just that's, got shot here. And oh, look, you know, he's doing that. That's the extent that I still yeah, play with toys. Awesome. But yeah. I do the same thing when other I'm than posing with the Transformers, other than cursing out, you know, <laughs> like my eyesight and my, my arthritis because I'm like, I can't. But I'm still, in my head, I'm like, oh, oh I, you know, I'm still making the noise of the Transformers. Right. I'm still like, oh, look, he's bullet time Optimus as he's dodging this and, and putting it all together and stuff like Because to me, it's still... A, uh, at at this point in my life, a, a, as you know, there's so much going on 
in real life. And when I sit down these Transformers and my toys, my mind goes completely blank and I'm just all focused on these figures and their stories and what what transforming them is making me do to them and the poses and all that stuff. And I forget about all the drama and everything else going on in the world today with my life and everything else is going on. All I care about is why, uh, why Frenzy and Rumble are painted the same color in this episode. <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, or how I'm going to get this guy over, or do I need a spudger, or any of that stuff. You know, what what's the story today? So it's an escape. Right, right it's an absolute escape. And the same way I realized it was when we were growing up. Because, uh, and not to get into, like, too, too deep of a personal diatribe or anything like that. But, you know, we had a rough uh, upbringing as well. And so we would go and play with our toys, and figures to get away from what was happening in the real life you know the hardships that our parents were dealing with and how they were bringing home from work so for us this was how we got away from that and so we just continued on into our adulthood that's how i feel i would deal with that i don't know about everybody else for them I mean. i'm sure people collect for multiple multitude of reasons which is something we will actually have toy therapy sessions yeah. so um but in the fact that you still collect transformers like how how has Transformers in general evolved. Uh, well, we have mm. examples here today. <laughs> really? I'm very <laughs> that. Examples. What a, it's almost like that was segue. a segue. <laughs> yeah. So as we brought up before, uh, Transformers have changed in a lot of ways. It, it, initially, um, they were just designed so that they looked like the vehicles or uh, what's known as the ulterior, alternate modes that they were in so like this is optimus prime g1 optimus prime uh original and uh his transformation when he turns into optimus prime is so blocky and and big that it wasn't really too exciting to see in robot mode uh the same with and and please don't don't shoot me <laughs> or get me in trouble G1 Megatron, right here. This is a toy, not an actual pew pew. Toy. <laughs> it does. Didn't the original shoot pellets, if I remember right? Uh, I thought they shot the red, no. red pellets. No. no. That no. was they did. That was a third party one. That's eventually. That's right. And, this... and, and before you like purists get all freaked out, we do have all the original, all the, the attachments that come with it. <laughs> but when he would transform, like this piece right here, would be his crotch. And you would have to pew pew his crotch. And you have to flick his, flick his trigger. You know, this is a family friendly show. Right. Trigger. Right. Trigger. He would he would become soprano when you <laughs> were playing with him. Uh, and, and so nowadays, and also in robot mode, had the oddest shape. Right. Very, it just was confusing. Yeah. And so nowadays you have um. <laughs> first off, they vary in sizes. <laughs> Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> but not only are, is there careful, meticulous care into making sure it looks like a genuine truck, Peterbilt truck coming down the road, but when transformed, it looks amazing. Like, it, it, it looks like a robot, a complete robot in full form. And it doesn't have, unless you're going for, like, what's known as the Babers Transformers. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have, like, the jutting parts and the awkwardness that it used to have. Now it's a smooth transition uh, in looks between robot mode and alt mode. And so that's how things have changed. So that was one example. I'm going to show you a few, few more examples here. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, the, 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 um, the grail item uh, back in the day, in the heyday, of Transformers collecting was Starscream. No, oh, sorry, Jetfire. I almost had to slap my own hand. In <laughs> oh. Man, they could have at least dusted. Freddie could have at least dusted that off. I know. <laughs> what good is having a man serve if he's not <laughs> serving the madness? Anyway, uh, so this is G1 Jetfire. Now, the reason why this was such a hot item is because of the 99.9% similarity it drew to the Macross Robotech figures that came out back in the 80s. Um, and so both, not only in the animation form, but in the toy form, uh, they were both very, 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 very extremely similar. 
They're identical. Uh, uh, with only one difference in that... The scale. The scale and the skull and crossbones is missing from the cockpit. Which is what Robotech had in the Rick Hunter series version. Should have had Freddy bring that one out too. Right. Well, apparently I, Freddy is not perfect. I have the skull squadron. And there was also, if you recall... Um, when these were first um, put out, they had right here on the wing, they actually had the Macross logo. That's right. That's right. Now, here's Jetfire today. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly larger. Just a wee bit and with a bigger backpack. Wow, that is insane. Um, like a flying tank. It is like a flying tank. <laughs> and... If I had the three hours on the show to transform this, <laughs> I would show you just how articulate and beautiful and smooth the transform figure is. Yeah, that's pretty massive. As it is, like, hold, hold up the other one in comparison. See, as you can tell, this one took a spinach that today. Yeah. Um, now, again, for all you purists get all cranky, there's the power booster armor for the original jet fire okay he so is we, complete we have it all yeah he is complete so this is the the newer version of jet fire which just came out with the siege line um and i love this jet fire this <laughs> uh, and it's look at the the wings are i mean they bend everywhere I, I, yeah i don't have enough <coughs> hands to show you but um and another one that's my favorite is uh they all seem to be your favorite. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> I have a lot of favorites as a kid. This one. Now, all the, just for the record, uh, because of life's turmoils and twists for me, all these G1s I don't have anymore. These are all his. Available at the KSK website. <laughs> some of them, not all of them. Some, some of them are them. available, yes. Not all of them. Not all of them, because some of them are my favorites. <laughs> right. Boom. For instance, this is not for sale. <laughs> Shockwave. No batteries uh, in it. It does work. There are just no batteries. Well, that's, that's disappointing. Now, one uh, this this also has kind of, kind of one of the problems that um, the original Megatron had. And that these came out as weapons, right? Weapons that fit in human hands. But they wouldn't fit into the hands of the Transformers that were going to use them. So eventually, these weapons were phased out. Not to mention... Kids and weapons in their hands, you know. It's probably a bad thing. Right. Plus, Megatron would transform into this form, and Starscream would use him as a weapon in the cartoon, but you couldn't do that with your toys. Right. <laughs> it wouldn't shrink small enough. Now, some of the Starscreams that are released nowadays uh, come with a smaller version of Megatron that fits in his hand. So it's kind of cool, but it doesn't transform into a robot. The, the coolest the, or the most unique thing about this, and something maybe not all collectors know, is this isn't the original version of this because we got uh, a version before, um, like directly from Japan. Correct. Strictly from Radio Shack, right? Right. That was uh, the, the, a different color, too. It was a darker Black. version. Black? Black or dark gray. Yeah. A laser man. So this is what their solution of it is. They, they changed it into a spaceship. But um, it still kind of looks like a gun. Which just... still kind of looks like an upside down <laughs> gun. Pew, pew, pew. But, oh, you know, is... it, it's safer for the kids and it's a lot more fun. And it has, still kind of has that Robotech feel to it. Yeah. You know? It is very, it looks very similar to the original. They kept, they kept, they kept, they kept a lot of yeah. the similarities there. So it still maintains that, that shockwave feel like you still think it's him, but there it that is. That one's a really cool one. Yeah. Keep your actually, eyes on your I toys. I actually kind of like that. Keep your eyes off my toys. <laughs> <laughs> Just like when we were in school. <laughs> um, here's another one. I've always been kind of obsessed with this. This one is mine. This is the, the G1 uh, Soundwave. Soundwave. But this one is the, the re-release that they recently put out. Um, not the original one, and unfortunately not the MP3 version of it. Uh, they an did, MP3 version? Yeah, they made That's one awesome. of these that was an MP3 version of it where it still had the cassettes and everything that would, would 
pop out, but you would pair it, or you would sync a MP3s into it, and it would hold like 128 gigs or something like that, yeah. and play music out of it, and it was pretty awesome. I'm like, oh, they need a Bluetooth version of it. There's Laser Man. There's Laser Man. <laughs> I thought he brought it, but I wasn't sure. He was, he, he's very sad today. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's in a box. Yeah, he's as you can see, there's they're I, literally identical except for color. Yeah. There's there's. But this was something that you got at Radio Shack. Yeah. Tandy. Tandy was the Radio <laughs> Shack brand for a while. Yeah, this is uh, it's still functional. Now, while this isn't the current version of Soundwave, it is one of the cooler ones. This is what's known well, as the I Shattered like Glass colors. version. Um, I like it. Uh, the only thing that's really weird for me is... Let's see if I can do it. Uh, no. The only thing that's weird for me is this version of it. Uh, Soundwave wears a headband. <laughs> as, as if he's sweating to the oldies. Um, which is awkward. He's been working out. Yeah. Um, and then, finally, from my personal collection, Blaster, which was Soundwave's counterpart on the Autobot side. This one was really cool. It also uh, ejected and had cassette tapes that came with it. Oh, but yeah. That's, each one of these had cassette tapes that would transform into these little... Um, little critters. Yeah, little critters. Like, you either had animals or which one was your robots. favorite uh laser beak it was always a toss of there's two laser right. beak and ravage those were always the hot commodity items. rumble rumble was pretty cool rumble was i liked the brothers uh but ravage was always my favorite so that was the original version here's the newer one this one is from oh, wow. Um, a third party collector oh those colors are awesome yeah and this is a uh, uh Metallic, actually. A lot of the parts on here are metallic. And uh, this one's really nice. Um, and they did the same thing as they did with Soundwave in that they made an MP3 version of it. Um, and they also made one that's a Bluetooth speaker, too. Oh, okay. So it's pretty awesome. And uh, uh, it's just another version of it. I like it because they, because of the, the, the highlighted black colors. That came out with it. Yeah, that showed, that looks really good. It, it makes really it pops. pops. Yeah. So, yeah, that's when I'm not collecting combiners, which I was going to bring, but no. <laughs> that would take up most of the space. Right. I was going to bring some. huge. Look, I have over 300 Transformers, and um, uh, which is a lot for me. I'm sure it's not a lot for mostly uh, hardcore collectors, but but they, they keep my, uh, they help me keep my sanity. That's the thing is, um, the the toy collecting is where before it was something like much like comic book readers or people that were really into like D and D or, or role playing games in general. Mm -hmm. Everybody says D and D, but it, it's it's general role playing games. It's something that a lot of people hid. Um, like I talked about, like there there was a there were people. Like when we were kids, they were made fun of or picked on because right. they were into certain things. Right. I mean that our group really didn't have that problem because most of us could fight. So yeah. <laughs> we didn't have a choice. We grew up in a neighborhood where if you didn't fight, you were dead. So But like a lot of a lot of kids grew up and they were bullied because of it or picked on because they were into comic books or they were right. into you know universal movie monsters. Like that's that's crazy that if you were into horror, you were considered a weirdo back then. Right. You know, skateboarding, and, and it, man. I yeah, got picked on for exactly. skateboarding. Exactly. Yeah. Skateboarding, like all this stuff that we used to do as kids, which has all come mainstream full circle now. and it's all yeah, mainstream. It's all super popular now. Which is, is it's awesome because... I mean, not obviously not popular enough to keep a store open. <laughs> <laughs> That's the economy. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, is um, so many people have, have, especially during the pandemic, they really dove into collecting. Like I personally did too, because we had nothing else to do. Right. You sit there and you're looking at your toys because you can't go out, you can't go anywhere, and and we everything. We all ran out of TV shows to watch. And everything back then, like the prices were super cheap. They've jumped up. They've sky things have skyrocketed. So... Now they're starting to plateau and come down a lot. Right. There's a lot of things that were way up. Their GI Joes were ridiculous, and I'm a big Joe collector. Now they're more reasonable. 
<coughs> because a lot of the things that that's happening is people that are our age are actually kind of getting out of collecting right. because um, we're we're getting older and it's just like you enjoy what you have. So the the kids that are the people that are really getting in collecting were the kids that grew up in the nineties. So things like Power Rangers. Ninja Turtles, stuff like that are becoming your more popular items now. So it's like it ebbs and flows with collecting. Same thing with comic books. Like Plus a lot of times when, when a movie come out comes out based on that, like for example, the, the Turtles, at first it was great. You know, the popularity of it grew and everything was wonderful. But then people realized how bad the movies were. And then they, they used the, they like took it out on the toys. You know, they, they'd go to the toy store and they'd see, oh man, uh, that movie was so bad. I'm not going to buy this toy based on that movie. You know, I move on to something else, and so the the, the toy line would suffer in that as, that aspect. Yeah, there's it's it's a it's a crazy world that we live in now. That um, so many of these things have become not only are they pop culture, but they uh, it dictates a lot. It did, like comic book movies dictate the health of of, of the movie industry in general. Comic book movies are probably your your highest grossing films right uh, currently, right? Uh, or at least the highest amount they're being within, spent on, right? Yeah, to make, yeah, they're they're definitely up there, you know, and and like, but we're also seeing a resurgence of things like horror movies, which I, I wish they would go back to more traditional horror movies than jump scare movies, but that's personal opinion. And CGI schlock is getting on my <laughs> Yeah, well, that's... I want real blood. (laughs) That's not those kind of movies. Oh, sorry. But, like, similar things. Things have evolved, and Transformers are popular again. G.I. Joe's with the the new, with the latest line have become popular again. Right. Um, Turtles are popular again with that that last uh, movie that came out, the cartoon. Um, So as as things get real, Star Wars got, you know, with all the new Star Wars movies, Star Wars got a whole new life all over again, as you can tell. (laughs) I'm a Star Wars fan, you know. I got one too. But, I mean, there's Star Wars posters behind us, along with the uh, lightsabers. Not a competition. (laughs) It might be. (laughs) But, um... Things and and even like I mean even professional wrestling is has seen a, a popularity resurgence. Like there is a lot of things that people would be ten years ago would be laughed at that are popular, like all over again. Or when a wrestler become... come out dressed as Buzz Lightyear, you know, and and wearing that in their costume, they come out dressed as comic book and Transformers characters all the time. Yeah, back back yeah. Uh, you know. In the indies, Finn Balor used to dress up as like different versions of symbiotes Venom, and yeah, yeah, Venom and Spider Man, all that stuff. Yeah, it's it, and there's a crossover because a lot of people, and especially like you'll see um, little hints of things like video games or even even tabletop games like Warhammer. You'll you'll see little teasers from Warhammer on people like all over the place. Not just not just like in geek related stuff, but you'll see it in like professional wrestling. you you find out like actors are into playing D and there's big, there's actors that have groups right. playing D and D. So, uh, and then it's been mentioned in shows that were popular things like big bang theory and stuff like that. Shows Chuck. like big bang theory have become popular and mainstream. You know, the geek, the geekdom shall inherit the earth at this point. You yeah. Know? <laughs> well, I mean, it's just, it, it's the fact that I'm, mean, I, I don't think that anything should be off limits for the imagination. If it keeps people involved and having fun, um, you know, like I've always preached to p- kids should be allowed to play with toys. Kids yeah. should want to play with toys because your imagination is endless with toys. Mm-hmm. So, uh, which is, is always great. I mean, I love video games, you know, eventually when this is all cleared up, our, this is my man cave. It's my game room. Uh, we will do a full tour of it. It is, uh, it is pretty packed with stuff. <laughs> It is kind of ridiculous. It's empty in here. It's a, <laughs> yeah. hollow, it's a hollow shell of a room. <laughs> no, you're just a hollow shell of a person. So? <laughs> Reflecting. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no. Uh, for me, it has always been about um, getting back to the source material, too. Like, all this stuff is all wonderful and great. But if you're going to watch uh, if you're gonna watch movies, if you're going to watch Plan- uh, Battle for the Planet of the Apes this next weekend coming out, uh, do yourself a favor. Pick up the original book. Read what they're based off of afterwards. 
and and then just let your imagination flow from there you know but that's um, that's one thing is like with some depending on depending on the fan some people don't know that things are books to begin with and they right. find out and then it brings new people to the material like that similar that happened with there were so many people that didn't know lord of the rings was a book series and had never heard of the hobbit before before the uh before the movie like, i always thought i was elite because i had read the silmarillion when i was like in the seventh grade yeah you know and even now people don't know what the silmarillion is so i still feel elite but but they show it in the movie <laughs> But anyway, that's just me. <laughs> Silmarillion. <laughs> well, we're also just old, so right. there's that. Very I mean, old. I mean, when we were in school, Lord of the Rings was required reading. You when you this you would go to summer, you'd have a list that you would get credit for to read certain books. And Lord of the Rings. Algernon, yeah. Charlotte's Web, Animal Farm, all that. Stuff. I don't know why they had kids read Animal Farm. Right. <laughs> Why are we in fifth grade reading Animal Farm? This makes no sense. Yeah, that's that's. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it has a pig that talks. Gotcha. If, if you've never read Animal Farm, wow. <laughs> We're living it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, family friendly. So, um, that actually pretty much uh, is what we wanted to cover for our first episode. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, what we have, our ideas we have going forward. Um, one thing we are going to do is we there we do have a few guests that I want to bring in. One of our, our friends of the a friend of the stores, a friend of the, our companies is a guy named by the name of Mike the Hunter, who you can look him up on YouTube. Does some amazing, amazing uh, play motion movies. Also does some really cool videos. Um, awesome dude. Awesome toy hunter, really cool. He takes uh, playing with toys to the next level, and it's fantastic. Yeah. So we're in, and then we have uh, another buddy of ours, Joel, um, who helps uh, when I do customization classes. He hosts that with me. We're gonna get into. Um, he does some artwork for us on the panel side. April fifteenth, uh, he and I are releasing a print on the website that he and I collaborated collaborated and worked on together. So you'll be able to see that there, and we'll have him over here on the show as well to talk. He's a hardcore. Joe collector and toy yeah, collector. And he's general. a hardcore, yeah. And he collects some pretty obscure stuff. So. Yeah, so you, but he, you can check out his artwork, fictionalstudios.com, I think. Yeah, and he's also website. he's also on Instagram. And yeah. Yeah, Joel does some amazing stuff. And, and he's really into um, the uh, customization. So him and I do, like I said, we host customization classes, which we'll get into those too. And eventually we'll be hosting them when we find a, um, a venue to do it. So we have those coming up as long. Uh, also, we have... What like I we had talked about earlier would be the toy therapy sessions where we just kind of break down of like why toys are our form of therapy. Yeah, and we'll also be doing um, uh, showcasing like I'll go through some of the transformations. Uh, I'll be transforming some of these figures actually on camera, uh, showing you the difficulties behind it and why they're therapy for me and what it does, and also why I have arthritis. <laughs> So, and why my glasses will suddenly be getting thicker throughout the episodes. <laughs> so before we leave you, I guess we have to answer the question. Sure. What, what's your what's your TV show? Voyagers. <laughs> cheating. That's cheating. That's totally cheating. If it's not Voyagers, it's Quantum Leap. Obviously. Those those uh, Quantum Leap to me, which what anytime the original. Quite- the Scott Bakula yes, version, yes. not the new version. I've never fan. seen I've never seen the new version, so I don't know. Well, I saw like a snippet of it. But due to your reviews, I haven't uh watched it. Do you on Forbidden Panel on on your normal panel cast, do you do T V reviews too or just uh just... not normally because uh, well it depends on the show. Like I wanna review eventually X Men ninety seven and some of the other we do mostly limited series and stuff. Um but we will do it here obviously yeah uh whenever we can um so there yeah so what's your answer my answer uh it's a toss it's it's um um it'll always be quantum leap man honestly Uh, between sliders and quantum leap sliders was a good one but Voyagers, I'm telling you, like people don't. I know I've I've talked about I talk people about sleep on Voyagers. But I talk that's only about, because it came out. It was what was it? Thir- thirteen episodes. Yeah, thirteen episodes in the '80s. 
And then the main character accidentally, on purposely, shot himself in the head and killed himself and killed the whole show. Yeah. Uh, with the, with the prop gun. Yeah. And so because of that, the show immediately got canceled and forgotten. It itself time traveled into obscurity. It's a it's an amazing show. Very few people, or actually, very I won't say very few, because there is there is a, a following for it. But it's one that a lot of people nowadays have never heard of. If you weren't around, if you weren't around, you don't really know. Right now, there, there, there's another show. There's uh, sliders. I you know I liked, but it was more sliders. Always felt a little cheesy to me. It, I did enjoy it. It was Buffy time traveling right. Buffy. That was that's what it was for me. Uh, there's a show called The Travelers on on Netflix with with uh, McCormick Michael, mm-hmm. Michael McCormick um who yeah what, whatever his name is <laughs> I can't think of it right now we forget stuff a lot a lot <laughs> uh um Dharma and Greg he was Greg I think it was Michael McCormick yeah uh with him in it and that is a fantastic show it ran <coughs> three seasons on Netflix phenomenal but it will always be Quantum Leap because uh no matter what it was relatable. Like, everything it went through, yeah, it was kind of cheesy. Sometimes it taught you, like, life lessons and stuff like that. But, like, I don't know, man. You just got into the role with him. Every time Sam took a leap, you leapt in with him. Yeah. And you felt what he felt and, this, and all the drama he had to uh, take on with him. And you knew why. You know what I mean? So that last leap, when he sat there, you saw that, that script across the screen... Sam, Dr. Samuel Beckett never left home. You know, that, I mean, I got goosebumps just <laughs> saying it. Like, See, that that's just... the one thing, like, Voyagers was, though it was primetime television, it was geared towards children. So they would they would go and jump into very historical points, stuff, and then at the end, they would say, hey, if you want to learn more about this person or when this happened, go to your local library, because we didn't have the internet. Right. So uh, it was it was made to teach children in prime time with the very, I wouldn't say adult themes, but it was it was pretty. I mean, they're going jumping into wars and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you know, it's but it had that like as a kid, like I, I like it, it. I loved it, and it's also I'm a big history buff, right. so I absolutely like that. I still watch it to this day, obviously. <laughs> but that that's one of the lost shows. There, there's last an, week. <laughs> yeah, little no, it wasn't even last week. <laughs> But literally, like that, between that and there was another show that I absolutely love that a lot of people have never heard of called Tales of the Golden Monkey. Those are my two that I, I family const- safe show. I constantly bring up those things are just amazing shows that a lot of people have never heard of. It was a TV show that was done kind of like uh, it was about a treasure hunter. It was very Indiana Jones kind of. Now, would Land of the Lost qualify as a time trap? No, because they only went. One direction. One direction. See, this is the the dilemma that the question brings up. It, it, it's 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 a good way to hammer out all this stuff and relive all of our past and and just I don't know. It's a good it, it always piece. it always jumps into different yeah so many different things. Actually, we should do one question an episode. Yeah, like we'll, we'll present it at the beginning. Just just as long as we only do one episode a week. And <laughs> <laughs> I've had to answer seventeen questions this week. I can't think no more. <laughs> I have well, no opinion about anything. Well, I mean, you know, the, if we if we're doing other episodes in the week, they're obviously going to involve right, 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 right. other things. So, I mean, you no know, guests or whatever. A, a lot of a lot of the stuff that, but I mean. There's there's a billion of them. Actually, Joel pr- proposed a, a a question last nah, night. Don't bring it on no, to the next episode. That's that's I won't bring that on until he's here. So. Okay, okay. So he has, it's something he really wants to ask you particularly. He has so. to answer it too, though. That's yeah. The thing. So, so that is it for this version of Panelcast. This is AJ. Hi. I'm Richard. From, Hi. You can see AJ at forbiddenpanel.com. You can find me at. Crooked Smile Art. Uh, the links are going to be in the bio. You can follow us on all platforms. If you're looking for any toys in particular, that's what we do. We sell toys. Um, we, uh, you know, do our best to get you uh, what you're looking for. So Everything. So thank you for joining me, AJ. Thanks for being on the show. Appreciate you guys. If you stuck around and watched, if we have fans, great. If we're building fans, awesome. Uh, stay classy.
words.